Welcome back to Podcast 1313. I'm Dave, and I'm back with Spark, the reborn clone Hello. of Palpatine again. He's here with me. Bam, bam. Still looking like a fucking vampire. I'm fucking Count Palpatine, you know, a vampire masquerade, all that shit. <laughs> yeah, this is actually a vampire the masquerade podcast. Yeah, we fooled all of our listeners to listen to us ramble about Star Wars. Of course, now we're going to get into the, the real crux of the issues of the vampire world. Who's yes. your favorite faction, Dave? Uh, I really like um, the Zabat. They're really cool. They're like free thinkers. They don't really adhere to the Camarilla's rules. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that sounds pretty cool, man. Yeah, same here. All right. Now let's talk about Dark Empire. Yeah, let's let's do it. So, Spark, do you want me to open this up here, the first issue or do you want me to do that? You probably should, because uh, I have listened to the audio, and you probably should just revamp, because it'll probably come back to me, but yeah. you might as well go first. Well, yeah, since you listen to the audio, who knows what they might have cut out. Let me close my window first before we continue. God damn it. Ugh, there we go. Okay, so Spark. <clears throat> Dark Empire Volume 2. Uh, it has the same artist, Cam Kennedy, same horrible writer, Tom Veitch. It opens up on the planet of Balmora, the factory world. You remember all that shit, right? Yeah. See, <laughs> it's so stupid that I kind of forgot, but now since you brought it up, now I remember everything. Yeah, the repressed memories are just coming back to you because you remember how it opens. With the Imperial Executor Cedrus and a bunch of other dark side adepts arriving on the world of Balmora because Balmora has been selling weapons and mechs to the Rebel Alliance, and Cedrus wants them to stop doing that and come back under the heel of the Empire. Now, when Cedrus goes over there to try and bring them to heel, he goes up into a hollow call with the governor of Balmora, Beltane, and he's like, Hey, Beltane, uh, come out here so I can kill you and surrender your planet, you fuck. And Beltane's like, uh, no, get fucked. We got war droids. Come and try it, motherfucker. And yeah, so, <laughs> go on. Well, basically, let's put something in perspective here for, for the listeners. Balmora, I mean, this place is, like, producing droids that the Empire's using against the upcoming, like, large-scale conflict against the Republic, right? He got mad. This guy's whole premise here is to threaten this world with Star Destroyers from orbit mm -hmm. because he was selling some like tech on the side for profit right so the governor here is mainly in it, in it for the money right so logically thinking like okay maybe we could just pay him more not to do business to the republic here since you know you are producing you know these vinyl droids for a cause nope let's be a retard and tell him yeah we're gonna kill you make an example of you governor and take over your planet you know get get fucked there and the governor like you said he's like no that, that's stupid I know. It's like they try their whole landing invasion, and they just get shat on. Well, but... not only that, the idiot brought the, the, the destroyers close enough to get, like, fired upon by the um, anti, you know, ship guns mm -hmm. on the planet. So he they literally had to, like, go on high orbit. Then they had to land, cause all this destruction and chaos... Just for him to be like, okay, let's just... It's so pathetic. Like, it immediately introduces Cedrus and makes him look like a complete punk getting fucking punked by a, a governor. I also want to bring up that General... The guy who led Blizzard Force on the Battle of Hoth, General uh, Veers, was actually demoted for some stupid reason. I forget the reason. But he's a captain now. And he was leading some of the forces on the invasion and he died for nothing. D didn't you tell me Veers got demoted because his son was a rebel or something? His son went to the Reliance, yeah, it caused a bunch of shame. You gotta read up on it. I think a snow speeder missed his uh his ad at Walker and he kind of got messed up from that. And there's a whole bunch of like bad coincidences that happened with the general. He got demoted a whole bunch of times to uh, captain and he lost his life. Well, pointlessly for some stupid shit well he was free because now he's in dark empire anymore yeah i mean it's so stupid like what was the, like they literally wasted all those troops and everybody for like nothing just just for cedrus to capitulate and go okay we'll, we'll just buy from you yeah, and the governor was like yeah we're not you know the governor was like he just decided as a like, yeah you're gonna pay for this little shit so 
I mean, granted, that's what I would do. I'm like, okay, this guy's retarded. You destroyed our planet almost because you're an idiot. And now you're like, you want to do business with Yeah, we're doing business with you, wink, wink. Not really little shit. Yeah, we're going to backstab you, you dumb fuck. It's so, it's so stupid. Like, come on. They don't really explain what the hell an Imperial Executor is in this opening either, but he's basically standing in for the Emperor since Palpatine is dead, and he hasn't really jumped to any of his clones yet, so... And all, for all intents and purposes, Cedrus is the leader of the Empire right now, and setting the mood very well for how good a leader he is. It's in good hands. Yeah, they don't have all state, unfortunately. No. no, and They don't have the, the deep-voiced black man telling up. <laughs> But telling us about how we're in good hands. No, they don't have fucking President David Palmer to keep them in good hands. Oh, uh, Palmer. Dude. Palmer, like, this is the opposite of that. Like, Palmer had, like, a bunch of ball lickers around him, right? <laughs> the people in charge now are the ball lickers. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Awesome. It's, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I, I, I will say, though, the Balmora war droid, war droids do look pretty cool. They look like goddamn mechs, like... Yeah, they look kind of terrifying Gundam. in a way. Yeah, almost. They because also, they uh, were gone. It was like the Empire. It was like like Mark Nines, but I think they had a newer ones that they fought against the Empire with, like Mark Tens or something. It was like mm-hmm. some like huge Atlas looking um, uh, Mech Warrior sh- shit. Fucking Liberty Prime. Yeah. Well, there was one uh, panel I saw where one of those Mechs shot down a. I don't know if it was a shuttle or a fighter. It was pretty cool. Yeah, because I'm trying to. Did he send the? Um, you forgot the. It was the introduction to one of the the new fighter types. I was just and, about to transition uh, to that. Comic. Yeah, so you know, I'll let you do that. Go ahead. Yeah, the shadow droids debuted in this comic. Pretty goddamn macabre for Star Wars. They took the brains of dead pilots and cybernetically hooked them up to fucking fighters. What did you think of the designs, the shadow droids? <laughs> They were, it was, I mean, this whole aesthetic is a little goofy, right? It's like an acid trip. I mean, they looked kind of cool. Like, it was like, they had, they were like black metallic, right? Yeah. And like, kind of like the frontal screen was kind of like, um, like red. I mean, it, it looked cool for what it was, but it's kind of 40K, like from something out of 40K, you right. know, like you're, you're putting like the brain, uh, it's like, uh, like not even a death does duty end, you know what I mean? It's like, they're still... <laughs> kind of, you know, conscious, doing little, you know, droid shit. Yeah, I thought, see, the design, I'll say, looks cool, but it's right on the edge of looking goofy because it kind of has this weird, yeah. almost Shell-looking thing. Yeah, shell or helmet-type look to it in the middle. Do you know what it reminded me of, funny enough, uh, from Morrowind, the Slip Riders, kind of like those shells, kind of in a way? A little bit, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, but uh, you know, not much. But you can tell a little bit. It didn't look like you know, like a regular like tie. You would think, you know, the mm. tie aesthetic. We should also mention we're doing volume three in this podcast too, since it's only like fifty or fifty-eight pages. Yeah, we're just getting uh, volume two and three out of the way. We just might as well lump them in together because it's really short. Yep. So Cedrus, like the bitch he is, agrees to Beltane's demands, and Beltane is planning on selling him some war droids, but he's also in contact with the rebels back on Desucha because they have a plan. So it cuts to Desucha now and we get introduced to a pretty important character here named Cam Solusar. This is your first like time ever seeing this dude, right, Spark? You never heard of this dude before? Uh, well, yeah, when I read the comic the first time, yeah, that's the very first time I've ever heard this uh, dude. The more Luke we... introduced him, right? Yeah, the more we go on... Uh, going through the material and legends, he's going to be a little bit more in regards to like Luke's Academy. He's kind of like one of the main fixtures there. It's like whenever there's a scene on the Academy, he's usually there in the background where he has some throwaway dialogue. So he stays around outside of Dark Empire. Yeah, he was the very first uh, new Jedi Chad. Because mm-hmm. Luke has a horrible track record with his fucking students dying or falling to the dark side. You no, know, he, you know, Luke is a new master. You have to give him a little, little credit, little credits too. You know, of course. I mean, you're gonna lose some students, sure. Yeah, you're gonna lose respect for him the more you see of how good a master he is. Spark, quote unquote, good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess it, that wasn't his real his forte. You know, yeah. I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt here. So. All right, but uh, 
So Cam Solusar, he's a former dark side adept of the Empire here. He switched sides, and now he's Luke's best buddy. We don't really see any of the story uh, before he arrives here in Volume 2, but I do know there was some discontinued short story that never got published that would have explored Luke's meeting with Cam and his turn to the light side. So, on to Sucha here. They were getting contacted by Beltane. He's giving them the down low, saying, hey, I'm going to let you rebels inter intercept a shipment of SD-10 war droids, and you can get on those and infiltrate Biss using them, because that's where the shipment is going. And so, mm -hmm. the rebel leadership here, Wedge, Lando, the main characters, everyone else, they're debating how they should play this, because Wedge says they should have rebels stow aboard the shipment and attack the Citadel on Biss from within. Luke disagrees and says maybe we should use the war droids to go free other worlds so they can attack in full force. And everyone else, minus Cam, disagrees and just unanimously goes for Wedge's plan. And uh, Luke, Leia, and Cam... Well, after that, Luke is kind of like walking off, and Cam says something weird here where he's all like, oh, I hope the council disagreeing with you, Luke, won't lead you to lead you to fighting against them. And I'm like, okay, it was like one disagreement on a battle plan. I don't think fucking Luke is going to go at war with the rebel council. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I understand why Luke didn't think it was a good idea. Granted, you're, you're literally like getting on these droids and going to like one of the most heavily defended planets in the entire like galaxy right now. Cause you have to think um, when the empire, when the, well, the, well, the emperor, well, or we're not gonna. Well, the new, the the empire's new empire, right? <laughs> <laughs> Each planet is pretty much like a mini fortress, right? It's like they're all heavily defended, like you know, because these we're using all these planets as staging grounds to kind of like get out of like the core, you know, sector and go off and reconquer the empire. So like, it, it probably would have made it a little bit better to use the droids to the, you know, kind of liberate some of these other planets to, to you know, kind of feel a bigger armory against you know the new the new threat here but you know hmm. people thought it was a good idea but you know yeah so after that meeting there luke leia and cam head off with the holocron that leia swiped in the first volume and uh they've learned all types of exposition about a planet called osis where they can recover jedi knowledge and leia is going to head back to vima again because the holocron just told her to so that's the, the weak excuse they have to go back to Nar Shaddaa. Han comes yeah. in, and they and she, he and there's like a quick line where uh, he mentioned that the kids, the twins, are being taken care of by Winter. Now, Winter, I swear to God, the Thrawn trilogy is like one of the rare pieces of media where she's not just babysitting the kids, but like yeah, for the majority of the EU, she's just basically being the mother, the real mother to the fucking Solo twins. Well, and plus, you know, the, the Robo Nanny is there for support. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We'll get to that in Crimson Empire. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> There's some awkward narration in this section, too, here about describing Leia's internal struggle struggle as, like, a mother and a rebel. It's, like, really weird because it's not internal monologue from Leia. It's the narrator saying, uh, though she struggles with being a rebel and a mother at the same time, Leia always chooses the rebellion. Yeah, the the audio drama, like thing, it it skipped over that crap. <laughs> I, I don't remember hearing that, so thank God. Yep. Also, I, I also wrote down here in my notes, Luke is still wearing the goddamn dark side outfit he has, despite no longer being a dark sider. Well, man, he has to keep up with the fashion. Like, there's a fashion sense in this comic, right? They like if you're a force user, you have to look like either diseased <laughs> or a goddamn vampire. Sickly right? green coloring, like like baby vomit green or baby <laughs> diarrhea. It's disgusting green. It's like when you when you think of sick, you think of that. Mm -hmm. I guess he just he has to keep that dark side drip. I guess, I guess this, you know, with a high collar, you know, the, the Draco looking shit, I guess it's comfortable, you know? I guess. Uh, then it cuts back to Cedrus, your favorite character, returning to Biss to report his failure. And he discovers that two of the fucking dark side adepts are destroying Palpatine's clones and they're attempting to seize power in Palpatine's absence. So he goes apeshit and kills those guys. And in the corner behind him, he sees Palpatine is back. And a clone body which reveals himself 
And there's, I wanted to mention here in this scene too, before Cedrus fought these dark side adepts, there's a really weird mention of the netherworld of the Force. Spark, what the fuck is the netherworld of the Force? Uh, what is in the, uh, I, I don't know. I guess it's, um, I don't think anyone knows. Let me, okay. You know how in a lot of media, there's like the shit, not just sh- Shadow Realm, but shit. <laughs> the Shadow like, like Realm. Spe- <sighs> is the Yu-Gi-Oh podcast? Okay. It's like the fade from uh, Dragon Age. You know, you're gonna have you know uh, force, you know, force demon. I don't know. I, yeah. Just, <laughs> I, I, I don't see. You can't explain it because like the force is kind of has the spirit esque stuff with it, right? So that can explain that. So, like, what is this Force in the world? Like, it's yeah, never... it's like introducing this whole other element that just doesn't vibe with how we understand the Force. Yeah, there, there's some more of that later on in Dark Empire Three with the fucking it's described as like a Sith hell or some shit. But we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, so that's issue one. Issue two: Shug, Sala, Han, Leia, the droids, Chewie, blah blah blah, everyone. They fucked off to Nar Shaddaa now to find Vima. There's a really stupid scene of Boba negotiating with dark side adepts. I'm going to just breeze by or skip over most of the Boba Fett scenes because they're really stupid and pointless. But I, I want to mention, um, if you listen to the audio version of this, Boba Fett sounds like a goddamn fucking robot. <laughs> Dude, he does not sound like Boba Fett. Like they, they weren't even attempting to do his voice. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Hold on one second. Okay, so yeah, Boba Fett. There was a really weird part here where he's talking to these dark side adepts and negotiating with them, right? And the dark side adepts try to, like, blackmail him by saying, oh, we know you were a former stormtrooper and killed your superior and Vader overlooked it. And Boba's like, nah, screw this. I'm not going to get blackmailed. And he, like, fires at them to try to escape now. Yeah, I, I now, this was before Boba Fett was a Mando, so. Yeah, it, it's really weird within the context of, like, everything that came after. Yeah. It's like they really play him off as this just a random mook in this comic. Dude, he's like, oh my god, like, for, like, the best bounty hunter in the entire galaxy, he jobs so much. So like, badly. He just bad it, it, it's kind of shameful how bad boba fett is and like like there's a lot of people out there I don't, I don't, there's probably a few of our listeners that are boba fett fans it's like an insult to the character like he literally like he bumbles every chance he gets to get like solo and, like the group he just fumbles mm-hmm. all the time would you say this is on par with the clone wars grievous this is on par with the saturday morning cartoon villain <laughs> So yes, that's it how is bad he mumbles. <laughs> Where, that's, uh, that's how bad he mumbles. It just... it just makes me wonder why he even bothered with him because he never has any impact on the plot. Yeah, why even include like Boba Fett in there? Like he wasn't even like he didn't even do no, nothing like cool. He literally said a bunch of dumb stuff, and then he he missed every opportunity to become some badass. Like he literally was like he, like he's kind of a joke in this. Like why even put him in? I don't know, but. He's in there regardless, along with a lot of other dumb shit. I gotta say, though, like, Volume 1 was bad, but Volume 2 already by the first issue was fucking way worse in terms of his plot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, the whole Star Destroyers and people dying and now, you know, Boba Fett, it just... From now, like, the first issue, okay, you probably could say yes. A lot of this stuff's kind of stupid. You know, telling Leia I can go into your room, blah 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 blah. But then the second one starts off of like, I'm gonna I'm gonna kill you, Governor, and the governor's mm-hmm. like, no, you, and I'm gonna invade your planet. And I'm like, okay, let's take a, you know, let's do a treaty. Well, okay, let's do a treaty. Wink, wink. I'm gonna go tell the rebels I hate you now. That's pretty much what it boils down to. Yep, it's like we're watching a a comic adaptation of like a regular game of Crusader Kings. <sighs> well. Yes, but there isn't a lot of, uh, you know, what happening within the <laughs> family. It's because when we played that game, <laughs> it was quite the experience. Yeah, there's a lot of cucking going around. Yes, and on top of that, you know, 
we had this, the Silk Road, which means we were rolling around on a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a fun ass moment there. Yeah, but um, let me continue on here. So they arrive on Narshada, the whole gang there. Uh, the dark side adepts are on Narshada, like I mentioned earlier. They're trying to find any Jedi on there. They're trying to find Vema specifically and kill her. And they sense her presence in a crowd of people, but Vema slips away. So do you know what these dark side adepts decide to do, Spork? Uh, what? They just decide to just shoot into a random crowd of people, <laughs> hoping they just kill her. And they don't... They took that out in the audio version, too, funny enough. Really? See, it sounds like the audio version yeah. is a superior one. They just cut out a lot of the extraneous stuff. Yeah, like... The audio version, even though, like I said, Boba Fett didn't sound like Boba Fett, like some of the, the voice acting ain't bad in it, especially with everything else. But like, it literally takes a lot of the padding out and goes like straight to the events. Because when I was listening to that, that event didn't happen within the audio version. Yeah, it didn't really need to be in there anyway. So the yeah. group continues asking around, trying to find Vima, Han, and Leia. Found find some random dude who says, "Oh yeah, she went to the lower levels," but. They attract the attention of gank hunters. Now, this is the first introduction of the gank species. They're pretty okay. They get expanded upon later in other material, but they're like cybernetic bounty hunters. Apparently, they're like furry under their armor. But, yeah, they're just like covered in cybernetics and shit. Yeah, yeah if anybody's familiar with um, uh, the FFG Star Wars tabletop, there's actually, you can play as a gank. They're actually really, really good in that. Yeah, they're for like cool. mechanical stuff. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Uh, as they're getting chased by the gangs, there's a funny moment where they realize the bounty on Leia has like doubled and doubled again. So like as they're chasing her, they're like looking at each other like, huh, shit, I could just take it all for myself. So they just all kill each other. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Sala and Shug also just fuck off from the group randomly, said, oh, this is too dangerous for us. We're going to go get our ship, the Starlight Intruder, from last volume, from this. Uh, bye, guys. So they just exit at this point. Han and Leia find Vima down in the lower section. There's a mention of one of the beasts, the, what are they called? Verblithers? This is the first time we see those creatures. Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember what happened. Yeah, didn't they um, have to, like, fight it out? Then Boba Fett comes down there and ambushes them? Yes, it's another stupid Boba Fett moment. I'm not going to spend too much time on it, because it, yeah, it was probably cut out of the, the audio version, wasn't it? No, it, like, but, like, the Gank Hunter stuff was cut... Well, yeah, the Gank Hunter stuff was cut out. So, basically, if you go to Nar Shaddaa, some stuff happens. Uh, the two break off from the group. They find Vema, but then... Um, uh, Boba Fett shoots at him, and you know, it's like I got you now. So I'm, like, I'm trying to do. Let me try and see if I can do this voice. I I I, I got you now, Solo. I but downloaded just, just the latest weird. Windows so, patch. Yeah, it, it honestly sounds like some voice voice tech stuff. But it, yeah, he pretty much ambushed the group here, and they're having a little shootout and a little shindig. Yeah, Chewie takes off his helmet too, which just causes him to run away. He doesn't want to get unmasked like a fucking luchador. <laughs> Oh no, my mask! Let me just run, run away. Yeah, he like flies off because he should he takes his mask. <laughs> I don't know why this is so stupid. Like, <laughs> my mask is gonna run off. He has a spare one too on the uh, the slave one because in the next scene they show him back in the sleeve one. He's like, no, well, thankfully Boba Fett had a spare helmet on board. He's like, okay, <laughs> thank you. Why would Boba Fett give a shit? If, if if honestly, if he's trying to get money and his reputation is at risk, why the fuck do you run off because they, you know, your face? And this this predates like, the Mandalorian, so like this is the first helmet retardation. Yeah. So like, there was really no excuse for him to run off then, if that's the case. Like, you know, who cares if they see your face? You're gonna get a lot of money. That's just so. Do your objective. I wanted to mention too something about Shug's garage here on Nar Shaddaa. When they're going through the tunnels of it with the Falcon, they make another weird mention of how, like, the tunnel is, like, made of a prototype Death Star module. Because it looks like the inside of the Death Star. I'm like, okay, why? <laughs> like, why even include you, that? Why. You know, actually, that, that just strikes me as the artist was just so lazy, they just decided to just trace or just draw the inside of that Death Star tunnel. 
Yeah, because, okay, let's put stuff in perspective here. The Death Star Project was, like, top secret shit within the Empire. You're not going to be able to take certain fucking parts and shit and make it a part of your garage. They probably have that shit locked up, I think, in the malls when where most of that shit was created anyway, right? So how the hell are you going to get a prototype bullshit from the Death Star? Like, come on now. It's fucking weird and it's fucking stupid. Uh, it, it's stupid, yeah. I mean, but yeah, that's yeah, that's that's gone. Yeah, moving on, we have a scene here that uh, causes us to laugh out loud, <laughs> even to this day, where they're trying to escape Narshada and the in the Falcon. That dickbag Mako from the first volume rats out Han to the Star Destroyer with the dark side adepts on it, and. They're trying to get them in a tractor beam. Han does some type of maneuver here that I don't understand to this day that causes the tractor beam to latch on to the comm traffic network or tower that Mako was in, pull it out of the city of Narshada, and jam it into the bottom of the Star Destroyer, destroying it and killing everyone on board and crashing into Narshada. You heard that right, everybody. They, they, okay, so this is how this transpired. Uh, we were reading the comics, right? This is a little story. And I was talking to Dave during this. He's like, oh, yeah, these Star Trek side add-ups, they, 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 they look kind of cool and kind of intimidating. I'm like, no, nah, just keep reading, dude. So you read it, and we're, like, laughing how stupid it is. Because, like, this building they sucked up in the, in the tracker beam, it's, like, it's pointy, right? But it's, like, they literally had to, like, to take this building so fast that the puncture, the Star Destroyer, like, through the hangar, destroying it like like everybody the role did except for han and obviously the, the falcon but like it crashes into nar Shaddaa. and it's like how the fuck do you even manage that that's kind of impressive in a way that tractor beam must have been set to like you know mm -hmm. hyperspace fucking sucks and i don't know and why would you just keep <laughs> using the tractor beam if you see the tower coming towards you yeah, just turn it off. Like, from my knowledge, like, you, you could, like, suck shit up, but you can also turn off real fast if something's coming out. You know what I mean? Like, why are you going to just sit there and let a building puncture your ship and blow it up? I mean, we saw in Star's End that you can just turn off the tractor beam pretty quickly, too, when Han tried to call its bluff. Yeah, you literally have, an, like, a tractor beam operator operating that shit, like, in the Death Star. Or, like, not Death Star, but, like, the Star Destroyer. And they're just sitting there, and they can turn it on and off at, at will. You, they literally had to sit there and watch this building punch at the star. Oh, whoops. Oops. What are you doing? Oopsie. Yeah, the dark side add up on the figure side, they're all retarded. Every last one of them is stupid. Every last one of them is an idiot. Every last one. They all go down. Yeah. One panel slash, one t panel blaster shot. Every time. They're not, they're not scary at all. They, they're, they're literally there to, like, become a they're, minor, like... They're on the same level of intimidation as a B-1 battle droid. Yeah, they're not really... You would think they might be scary because, oh, yeah, you know, they know the dark side and they have lightsabers. No. It's like literally giving a lightsaber to some, like, like some random person off the street and call them a dark sider. And then, there you go. You have dark side add-ups. Yep. Pretty much. So, Shug and Sala are sneaking into Biss to find the Starlight Intruder. Uh, there's a quick moment here where they use their false codes to worry if it's going to work. It works, of course. The person behind them gets blown up because their codes were false. So they sneak inside of Biss. It cuts to Cedrus reporting the failure, or hearing about the failure of his dark side adepts. Palpatine's mad because I think, I think Cedrus trained them, and he holds Cedrus responsible, so... Well, no, Palpatine is also for a quote unquote a loss of a Star Destroyer. But I'm like, Palpatine, you have an entire like rate math to your fleet of Star Destroyers. Like, you have one the Eclipse. Gonna, yeah, one's really not going to. I'm like, no, his ass lost the Eclipse, which he should be more mad about, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> There's only two, right? So he destroyed one and he has one left. I would be more mad that one of my badass super Star Destroyers get destroyed. Because of my little force scream shit, I'd be more mad over some rinky dink ass fucking destroyer. Because mm -hmm. because I, I think the Eclipse like cost like uh, at least how many destroyers like ten. Dude, that's worth like that. several fleets. Yeah, and he's mad about one little ship. Oh yeah, the two dark side ended. I would have been like, you know, they're stupid. 
here. Just get some more. Yeah. Start trying to add a dime a dozen anyway. Let's just get the janitor and get him all like. I mean, we literally see in, I think it's in this volume, Palpatine just shoots some random dudes with like force energy and turns them into Darksiders. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Y'all are Darksider. Y'all are Darksider. Damn it. Y'all are Darksider. Y'all are Darksider. Uh, Burger Flipper, you're definitely a Darksider. Mm. It's like a fucking robot mm-hmm. chicken sketch. <sighs> I didn't know, like, see, here's another thing in this. Like, I didn't know, like, he can, like, give you powers. Like, I thought the Force was something, yeah. like, there's varying, like, levels of the Force, right? And sometimes you're born with a lot of it, and sometimes you're born with a little bit of it. Or sometimes you're not really born with the ability to, you know, like like a Jedi or shit. But, like, literally, he just, like, does this shit, and he's like, okay, you have powers now. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. So, Cedrus and Palpatine... Then hear about Luke on Ossus. He gets picked up by a probe droid. Palpatine dispatches the terrifying, capable, reliable Cedrus to go and capture Luke. So Luke and Cam arrive on Ossus, and they discover on there the forest tribe of the Yasana. Now, the Yasana here are descended from Jedi who arrived on Ossus however, however many thousands of years ago. But they yeah, kind of cause... like gone like yeah. feral well not feral but i guess like a little primitive well osis used to be a jedi planet like way back you know before the republic i think and like there was like about between like dark jedi and them and because osis used to be like a jedi planet and they were describing it and these people were like kind of like um uh, the jedi that were kind of stranded on this planet and they kind mm-hmm. of you know what i mean one a little bit of tribal here yeah they have like their own language stuff that they really can't understand at this point they also use these concussion arrow launchers, which are kind of like hyper-powered yeah. harpoons. I think those are pretty cool, right? Yeah, those are pretty. I, I like the the genius, like how to describe that. That was pretty neat. Right? Yeah, they, they use uh, they use the force too to help aim their shots. Yeah, I mean, I have to give credit for doing that. I mean, that's pretty cool. Yes, it's doing that thing again with your mic, where it starts getting all bathroomy. Really? Yeah. Maybe it's because you're too close, and it says the. the... No. Is it is it fine now? Yes. It might be I the just volume. My yeah, it might be that the volume is uh leveling out when it gets too loud. Yeah. So yeah, when it does that, just let me know that I was hitting my mic. Yeah. As you were saying that, <laughs> it did it. <laughs> God damn it. Just infuse it with the dark side. Dark side now. All right, it's fine now. So, as they're talking, well, trying to get these locals to understand that they're not enemies, they eventually sit down with them. They find out their history, and that's when the dreaded dark side infused stormtroopers enter, along with Cedrus and a forgettable dark side adept. Hold up, hold up. We we missed a important piece here. Luke found a tribal piece of ass. <laughs> we gotta get into that. Because I know which Luke yeah. will. <laughs> Literally, okay, let's just... I, I, that I, doesn't I, happen I, yet, though. That doesn't happen yet, though. But they do meet her. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, okay. All right. So let me... Let's... Before we go ahead, because I thought that already happened, because this comic's just everywhere. But so let's, let's continue. Dark, the Dark Side Stormtroopers. Okay, now, the people listening, I want you to think of a stormtrooper, right? And that's it. That's yes. a dark side stormtrooper. Just think of the Sith troopers and the Rise of Skywalker. They're just as useless. Yeah, and like, it was described how they're infused with the dark side, but I want to tell you, everybody, this. It did not help them whatsoever. One bit. They were yes. literally, I think they were working regular stormtroopers, I think. Yeah, it's starting to do that thing again with your audio. Yeah, I don't know why it does that. Yeah, so we were on the scene with the legendary Dark Side and Fuse Stormtroopers. Um, the Dark Side adept that came along with Cedrus, he's taken out in one panel, like all the others, by Cam. And him, mm-hmm. Luke and Cedrus get into fighting. And Luke manages to repel Cedrus, but Cedrus takes hostage. Jem Yasana, one of the female Yasana in this tribe here, and he's holding her hostage. 
Now, this is, this is another legendary Dark Empire moment here, Sparky, because <laughs> you, you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. As as Cedrus <laughs> is holding Jem hostage, it turns out that the dried tree in the center of their little area here is a Jedi, a sentient Jedi alien that wakes up from who knows how long they were sleeping, picks up Cedrus, holds him tight, and they describe it as him drawing on the power of the planet with the force to blow him and Cedrus up, freeing Jem and defeating the enemy there, because all the stormtroopers jobbed off screen, because they're useless. But it doesn't stop there, because after this random... Apparently Luke found out about him through the holocron. His name was Ud Benar, who just happened to be here on Ossus. He looked like a crawl dead. <laughs> you think so? Yeah, he looked like... He honestly looked like something occasion would eat. Yeah, well... But then he grew into a tree. And then blew up. And then underneath, and then, underneath his crater is a hundred thousand fucking lightsabers, just a whole pile of them, mm. which all the Asana well, just snatch up. Shit, dude! Like, there's probably like ancient ass sabers. You can literally probably just like sell those and get a lot of mm. money. They're ancient, but those things still work. Well, I hope they will work. Mm. There's no return and warranty on that shit. No. I mean, they're probably better than the, the. I mean, yeah, I have to think ancient sabers were probably made a little bit better than you know modern esque sabers. Mm-hmm. At least they're not. Maybe. The, well, it just depends. At least they're not like the really old backpack sabers. Yeah, yeah, I, I saw. Yeah, art of that. Yeah, they literally had to carry around something that looked like something out of Ghostbusters. Got <laughs> <laughs> a cord and shit. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. And if you go really far back, they don't even have sabers. They just have force-infused blades. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's way back. Mm. Jesus. The Jedi were the Jedi. Yeah, the Jedi. God, the Sith, the Sith weren't even... Sith. The Sith were like a species at that point. They weren't even a religion. Let's see here. Uh, that ends issue three on that weird-ass note. In issue four, it jumps back to Lando and the droids, but now the moment... Let me go back to issue three, because the moment you mentioned earlier actually did appear. After the explosion, Jem and Luke got, like, knocked onto each other, and there's, like, a brief moment where they connect through the Force, and Luke is able to understand them. So just all of a sudden, there's there's, there's a romance subplot here. At, At, like, out of the clear blue, like, they barely know each other, but, like, she said... Oh, through the force, we're connected, and it feels like I've known you forever. And Luke was like, "Oh, I think I know so too." I can like, understand let's, let's you. Out. Yeah, and they and they kiss. I'm like, "What the hell is this? <laughs> this doesn't work that way. How is it that that fast?" Well, I, I don't know. Maybe you know, Luke. Luke wanted to go a little. He wanted to go tribal, so <laughs> we can got it. Yep. More power to him if he wants that junk. You know. Uh, I'm not going to get into it. Let's, uh, let's move on, please. Let's I'm washed. <clears throat> so, yeah, in issue four, Lando <laughs> and the droids are trying to sneak on to this with the, the commando team inside the war droids. Palpatine. That's pr- the, the, what's up? I was going to say these war droids look pretty neat in a way. They do. The, the Viper Automata. Yeah, they kind of look like some insects or something. Cause, but Yeah, we'll go on. There's actually like a cool part coming up. Opinion. Yep. So Palpatine, meanwhile, is being shown around his new super weapon called the Galaxy Gun. It can fire out hyperspace capable missiles at planets, and it does some bullshit or whatever to destroy planets too. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's like a big nuke, basically. Like they they can fire, they can pretty much like fire from this, like at any end, like anywhere. Mm-hmm. And Palpatine received word of Cedric's failure, I assume from a probe droid, because that's how they found Luke in the first place. This is where he infamously turns to three random dudes and says, okay, you guys, you're Darksiders now. Shoots them with force energy. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, like, like, okay, there's only one example. I don't know if anybody probably knows this, but like, you probably don't know this either, but in the, in the video game um, Jedi Outcast, there's a place called the Valley of the Jedi which has, like, a force spring of some sort, and you can literally step into it and get, like, infused with the force. And then I think in Outcast 2, you have to fight these people called, like, the Reborn, 
which are just like normal like guys that got infused with like the force and able to use it, but they're kind of jobby like the dark side adepts. So that's what I kind of, I'm thinking when it comes to this, but the dark side adepts they look intimidating, but they are oh my god, they are man. really really not. They are so pitiful. Yeah, very pitiful. Mm-hmm. I mean, they like they have blink and you'll miss it deaths. <laughs> it's that quick. It's like a panel, at least. It's like a picture of like them getting killed, and it's like okay. <laughs> cool. Yep. So Luke and Cam feel Palpatine infusing those dudes with the dark side from across the galaxy, and Rafe, the brother of a gem, one of the tribals here, shows them an old Jedi library with books and techniques that they're going to be using. So. Uh, after some time, Luke formally adopts Rafe and Jem as hopeful Jedi learners, and they depart Ossus. After that, oh my gosh, there's another, there's another weird part. So outside Nar Shaddaa, they're still trying to escape in the Falcon. Fett is chasing them, but I'm not going to spend time on him because he sucks. And they go through a cloud of interstellar gas that leads to a pocket Nebula. dimension that mm. reveals a new part of the galaxy called Ganathan Space. Where a whole hidden civilization with steam-powered space technology has just been waiting there. It's so retarded. It's <laughs> fucking cannonball. But, but it gets fucking worse. Cannonball one pet. It oh. gets worse because <laughs> this this Ganathan kingdom is led by a Jedi king of a former Clone Wars era Jedi called Apotogeos Brand, who was maimed by Vader, so his body is put in a floating cybernetic ball. He's literally a ball with a fucking head <laughs> on it. Little stubby we arms. Cannot, we're not making this up. We're not making this up either. That's literally him running a steam and he's like, space oh. empire. And Leia's like, "Oh, you're a Jedi." And he's like, "Yeah." Well, actually, they kind of did his voice kind of cool in the audiobook. They kind of gave him like kind of like a a real body ass voice because obviously he's in that that fucking floating orb suit. And I have to think, like, what did Vader fucking do to him? Make him like <laughs> float in an orb. He must Vader must have just chopped his legs off, took out his arms, and all this other shit. Because this guy was messed up. He's literally a ball floating in space. As my final humiliation to the Jedi, I shall stick you in this floating ball for the rest of your days. But he's kind of a tinker too, because uh, the Falcon had a like he had to use some concussive missiles, I think, against um. Um, these like he described it as some like old missiles, but the guy put a lightning gun on the Falcon. He was like, "It's better, it's better than your missiles, Solo." Yeah, give him a guy. I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, cool. lightning caster or some shit." Yeah, it's, I mean, basically, like Leia talks to the guy and like he was like, "Oh yeah, I'll join you now." So he pretty he pretty much picked up a floating old Jedi orb, mm. dude. It's like it's like we're watching like an RPG. You just came to the next quest line. You just picked up a new companion. Yeah, that's kind of what it feels like in that panel. I mean, that's kind of, in, in my opinion, this steam powered cannonball <laughs> shooting ship stuff is kind of stupid. Their like, fighters really look like a mix stuff. of World War One planes and spaceships too. It's literally stupid as hell. Like literally, how can no one like discover this when there's a nebula outside of now Hutta? Yeah, like you would think a lot of people would have been like, oh yeah, you know. And cool. somehow there's just a, a pocket dimension in there. I don't know what Tom Veitch was thinking, man. Uh, well, I was thinking that he probably needed some more shrooms. Was probably what he was thinking. Mm -hmm. But it cuts away from that to Biss, where Sala and the rest of the group there witness the rebels attacking with the war droids as Palpatine uh, orders them to unleash the Chrysalis beasts. Yeah, so like, can I, do you mind if I go in a little bit of detail when go it comes ahead. to this? They were basically at like a cantina watching that this battle unfold. And basically the Viper droids were kicking ass. Like they were destroying fighters and whatnot. And Palpatine's, um, you know, like the Dark Side HQ, his little palace, right? Had like all these like turbo lasers mm -hmm. that were shooting. But the Viper droids kept going. Well, yeah, well, Chrysalis Beast, which I looked this up. Uh, Palpatine used because uh, believe it or not, uh, it was actually Palpatine's also dabbles a lot of stuff alchemy too, and these are like kind of resulting of like dark side, you know, mysticism and everything else when it comes to that shit. So they kept like these huge ass ring core like a war beast, and like they're green, but they're like uh, they like rip and tear these viper droids. So they have to like 
come back and it was cool in the audio because it actually had like the screams of the creatures and mm-hmm. You know, stuff like that. I mean, it was pretty good, though, when it comes to, like, there's things I mean, that are kind of scary in a way. I will at least say the battle between the droids and the Chrysalis Beast did look pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. They always have Lando off in the middle of the fucking battle, too, in this comic. Right in the thick of it. You know? Shit. I know it's a Chad. Come on now. And he's with Wedge, too. They're like a duo for this comic. If you go Yeah, ahead. I kind of... W- I kind of wish they actually focused more time on Lando and them and to see what, you know, what they're doing, because it always like jumps back to some weird plot when it comes to, you know, the dark side jobbers or like, mm-hmm. you know, Luke trying to get in some trouble to pants. So, mm-hmm. so in issue five, the beasts are unleashed, like we said, and Sala goes to try and rouse up some of the other smugglers and freight haulers here on Biss to try and help the rebels. Um, the droids and Lando are attacked by one of the beasts, and I don't know if you caught this, but an ion blast hits one of these beasts and somehow kills it, which makes no sense from an ion blast. Yeah, that that was cut out. Because I remember, basically in the audio, they pretty much get rescued, and then the crystal beast was on top of, uh, well, trying to bring down the ship, and I think uh, someone shot it and whatnot, and it fell, and it went, so Yeah. <laughs> But see, this this is another Rise of Skywalker parallel because there's another goof in that movie where they say fire the ion weapons and they fire a fucking turbo laser. In this comic, they fire an ion weapon and it acts like a turbo laser. Well, that's uh, that. What do you think they got the? the graph <laughs> yeah, see, they were they were just saying staying accurate to Dark Empire. It actually wasn't a goof. Well. It was a, well, I don't know how the hell they made Dark Empire worse, but you know, congratulations <laughs> they did. I mean, Dark Empire even has the fucking herky-jerky pacing and just introducing these big concepts in, like, one scene or panel, too, like Rise of Skywalker does. Yeah. But they make it worse somehow. Yeah. There's a lot of parallels between these two, but I honestly, you know, like, even though we do shit on this comic, or we are a lot, like, in nitpicking here and there, I'd rather watch a Dark Empire movie than fucking what we got. Yes. Up, so Sala comes around, picks up Lando and the droids, and they're heading out of there. Palpatine allows them to leave, typical villain shit, and says, Oh, it doesn't matter. We shall use the galaxy gun on Desucha anyway. Their days are numbered. Yeah. Ooh. Typical shit. This is like, this is something out of Austin Powers with, like, Dr. Evil. Scott Evil's like, why don't we just go over there and shoot him in the head? (laughs) Dr. Evil's like, you just don't get it, do you? You really don't. It's the same thing. It's like, why don't you just blast them? Like, you got to have the galaxy gun right there. It's just, you know, come on, Palpatine, kill them. Well, maybe. Nah, maybe, maybe still right now. Okay, in Palpatine's defense, he got a report that the Falcon did some type of maneuver to have the tractor have it ram a, uh, a tower into its fucking bottom. Maybe he's afraid well, these smugglers have Han's same energy. <laughs> Well then, don't well don't like recruit these these random idiots. Call them dark side adepts and give them a star destroyer. That's probably why they they got destroyed because they're stupid. Turn these interns into goddamn Sith lords. That's what I mean. It's like it's like what what did you, what did you expect, Palpatine? Like they weren't gonna win. Yeah, you step it up, Palpy. Well, Palpatine does a lot of dumb shit in this. So. Yes. Han and Chewie, uh, they leave from Ganath in space now with that lightning rail like we mentioned. Uh, again, they meet Bob Boba Fett, but it's... What's up? They, I, I want to also mention they... No, you were about to say they, they zap Boba Fett and he kind of falls in the nebula. Yeah. He's completely useless. Yeah, he literally jobs yet again. I don't, I don't yeah, even think he's in... That, um, I don't think he's in Volume 3 either. <laughs> No, because he he's he's falling towards the nebula with the lightning gun. Bye bye. Bye bye, Fed. I don't even know why you're in the end of the comic, but I'm okay. How do you? Yeah. So after that, they start heading towards New Alderaan to be with their kids. Uh, it cuts to Luke training with Jem and Rafe. Uh, this is where they spontaneously declare their love for each other and share a sweet kiss. Yeah, another sweet quiz, kiss. Yeah, I'm yes. sure they shared a lot of things. You know, honestly, just remove Mara. Just replace her with a gem. She's obviously the superior love interest for Luke. <sighs> yeah. 
you know it in your heart to be true, Spark. I don't know. There's a there, there there's definitely a lot of Marge isms in a lot of the EU. You know, redheaded <laughs> girl, you know, blah 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 blah. I guess she 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 breaks that curse of redhead, green eyes. Gem is just well. Okay, listen. This is before Mara Jade. Luke was just trying to, you know. Well, no, actually, this is this is after Mara Jade chronology. Oh chronology. yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. which which raises a lot of questions. Where the hell is Mara Jade during all of this? She's probably off. I think they explain. You probably have to. Look, we have probably have to look it up. I think she's off doing some other shit, <laughs> and she didn't hear about it. Yeah, like hey Mara. But I think, I think at the end of the um, Thrawn trilogy, yeah, Luke kind of like broke her of like. Uh, Becoming the Emperor's hands, so I don't think she was even interested in that shit anymore. Mm, doesn't even want to just kill Palpatine again for good times. No, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, but I think well, if that was the case, Luke Padu, you know, got rejected by Mara, so he, he had to latch on to another, you know, another, you know, a woman yeah. of the Force. I do, you know, you know. <laughs> well. What are we going to say? What shit post is this? All right, so as we're here, <laughs> Luke witnesses Desucha being blown up from the hyperspace missile fired by Palpatine, and he's horrified. Issue six, the Solos arrive on New Halderaan and enjoy each other's company. Luke lands with his Jedi. There's actually a really cool page here of, like, Luke, Cam, Rafe, and Jem, like, fucking walking in like side by side towards them. I don't know why it was drawn like that. <laughs> like they're about to, uh, what's that movie where they're about to get on the, the rocket and they have that, like that wide shot of everyone walking towards in slow motion. Are we talking like, is it like a uh, Bruce Willis movie, the Armageddon? Yeah. Where they go like, like they, they walk like that and they have to hop into like uh, the, the little space shuttle. Yeah. They give them, they give them that there, type right? of treatment as they're walking towards the family there. Yeah. But this, this was made before that movie though, because that movie was made in the nineties. This was made in what? The eighties? Uh, no, this was in the nineties too. Cause the Thrawn trilogy came out in the nineties. It could have, okay. Well then that probably would make a lot of sense then. Well, that probably did it. Yeah. So I don't know. Who knows? Version. Maybe, maybe that movie ripped off dark empire too. <laughs> <laughs> Dark Empire is apparently wildly popular. Well, it's only one thing. There's, there's not on any uh, any other parallels, but mm. yep. So Pinnacle Base is destroyed. Uh, the imps off screen, I guess, just captured a rebel supply runner that like dropped off supplies to New Alderaan. So Palpy just conveniently finds out about that location where the twins and the soon to be born child is. Uh. While they're torturing that supply runner, we get introduced to the planet of Fajun here and the Bast Castle, which used to be Vader's castle. Yep, yeah, you actually go there in Jedi Academy with one of the single player missions. It was pretty neat. It's like some acid hellhole. Like it had like uh, acid rain and it was really bleak. Mm -hmm. Um, What was I going to say here? Oh, yeah, the, there's a, a statue of fucking Vader in the castle, too. Yeah. And the guy was like, oh, yeah, this used to be Vader's castle, but now it's my castle. <laughs> when you go, you like, okay, dude. King of the castle, don't do this, don't do that. Don't do this, King of the castle. I'm going to make sure. I'm gonna make a statue of myself and make it bigger than Vader. Why doesn't Palpatine just make fucking Borat, a dark side adept? <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> you can take Give it. me your tears, Gypsy. I'll take them from you. Give me your tears, Jedi. What is this Jedi? One of your spells? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's chasing Osmond around naked, trying to get the holocron. Dude, instead of the rubber fist, it's a fucking lightsaber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> yeah, so oh fuck! What do you have to say? <laughs> oh fuck! Mm, wonderful! Wonderful! So oh, that's pretty good. Pretty Palpatine good. dispatches his his DD here, as I wrote in my notes. That stands for Dark Side Dumb Fucks to capture the Skywalker children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that fits. Uh, he also wants the statue of Vader knocked down. On New Alderaan, the group discusses discusses the situation here. Han and Chewie leave to reestablish communications with the Bis Commando Squad, and while Luke is sleeping. He gets sent a Sith magic dream by Palpatine to try and mentally torment him. 
but it really just distracts him because the dark siders poison Luke with these weird little robot beetles or whatever. Well, they're called, I think, scarabs or, uh, or some sort of droids that Palpatine had a part on for one of the panels. He was he tortured that one um, uh, captain guy with him, and pretty much they like they can bore in your skin and poison you with some sort of weird poison. Yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. They then try and kidnap the twins. Leia and a gem come in to stop them. Uh, we see another brutal one-panel death of a dark side adept, and then a gem is shot and killed while trying to protect them. Cam and the other Jedi finish off the rest, but they don't really have much time to war- like mourn because fucking AT-ATs just spawn out of nowhere outside their little house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking calls to command that shit in, you know? It's like... The, the dark side adepts just snuck in. I, I can buy that, but how the fuck do they not see the AT-ATs in the distance? Because they weren't hidden. You could just look out and see I them. I told you! I told you fucking cops were <laughs> They just, just found them in. Mmm. Add item. AT-AT. <laughs> times 100. Oh, fucking Palpatine wishes shit. Why didn't, why didn't Palpatine just no-clip through the house and grab the children? <laughs> <laughs> no, he should just turn invisible, killed himself, and fucking got into one of the bodies of the kids like he you know, originally wanted. Mm. Shit. Easy peasy. Easy fucking peasy, that's right. So, before this random fucking assortment of AT-ATs can do any real damage, uh, Han, Lando, and the rest of the smugglers arrive and take them out. And after that, they all run off to Nespis 8, or Nespis 7, I, f- I forget which it was. Which, is, okay, there's another weird thing. Nespis, whatever, is a planet, or a city built in space just like a straight up city just floating in space and that's where the new rebel base is yeah i don't question that anymore (laughs) there's there's so much they throw at you in this volume yeah i like that's what i don't like about these volumes is like the pace they keep throwing all this stuff out and like it's not just doesn't fit the setting yeah it's real fast or it doesn't fit Yep, so Mon Mothma's there. Somehow the Rebel Council is still alive. They're just chilling on Nespis. Uh, Leia gives birth to Anakin Solo. And Luke has a vision of Anakin, Jaina, and Jason together as great Jedi Knights, which never comes true because Anakin doesn't even live to become an adult. <laughs> yeah, and then one one of the kids goes to the dark side. So. Yes, so that was a great vision, Luke. Uh, and that ends Dark Empire Volume 2. But then we get into Volume 3, which is even worse. Mm-hmm. See, in Volume 3, uh, we, don't even, we don't even have uh, the art to really appreciate at this point, because, I don't know, it just took a nosedive in this volume. Yeah, it didn't end, it didn't end on a good note. No, it's only 58 pages, too, which I guess is merciful, so you don't have to suffer through another 200-page epic. Yeah. Yep, but the fight against Palpatine continues. It opens up on Ossus with the Yasana Council foreseeing the rebels dying in droves and the death of Jem. Palpatine is aboard the Galaxy Gun watching it destroy rebel ships from hyperspace with the missiles. He receives a dignitary from some planet trying to swear fealty to him, some alien. But uh, his clone body is unstable and it's aging rapidly. And his anger genetically in- unstable. And the doctor told him, Palpatine, you cannot become angry, or your 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 body will become bad or dead or whatever he said. And he's like, Oh, okay, uh, I'll, I won't be angry. I'm like, All right. But he, then he's like, I need. Uh, what was the whole premise? He needs new clones. He needs like new genetic material from Jedi specifically. Yeah, to hold his power. So, you know what that means. Yep. He takes a little visit to Ossus to go snatch up the uh, Yasana chiefs on Nespis. I, I spelled Nespis here in my notes as N E S P I S S. Nespis. Yeah, it really don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure. uh, so, R2 D2 and C 3PO are going around the Falcon, and they notice there's an Imperial spy fucking around on the Falcon trying to like do something. The call over a Maybe not a lot. I know. He's 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 in an Imperial outfit too. You know what's messed up? They say he, but in the audio it was a she. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, because it had the comic panels, right, playing as the audio was playing, but 
it said it was a he, but in the audio it was a she. So I'm like, and it actually had a voice of a woman. It's such a weird. <laughs> but it was a man in the comic. I was like, what? Such a weird change. Yeah, it's like, why are they making the guy a, a, a she now? I guess they didn't care either. They'll never win solo. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Chewie knocks the hell out of him and they capture him. Then the rebels are just talking like, oh, uh, that that spy gave away our position. I guess we should like evacuate or something since Palpatine has the galaxy on. Uh, yeah, let's do that, I guess. Yeah, but it's too late. <laughs> yeah. So they start getting ready to evacuate. A fucking hyperspace missile crashes through. They're, this is what confuses me. The hyperspace missile crashes through the walls. Why don't they get sucked in the vacuum? asking too many questions I, I must be so the missile continues to crash through the city it lands in the like in the side of a cruiser but it doesn't go off it has like it's a dud basically yeah they they have a throwaway line of uh oh it had a faulty timer a faulty bonadan timer which is another reference to the daily novels with bonadan that planet yeah and the corporate sector authority i meant i noticed another uh, reference to the the novels there. They mentioned Amud at some point. Oh, really? Yeah, your favorite planet. Mm, yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> love that planet. Yeah. So then, it, it, then, then the panel it cuts over to Palpatine. And he was like, "You fool! You're my engineer. What happened?" And he's like, "Oh my lord, I think there was a dud." And he was like, "Oh, I'm gonna, no, I, I will punish you. Get it fixed. Fix my galaxy gun." Nah. Nah. <laughs> Fucking Skeletor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Palpatine getting upset causes, you know, his cells to start aging more. Doctor tells him, hey, you need to take a chill pill, man. Damn you! <laughs> give, him, give him a pot brownie or something. A dark side infused pot brownie. That'll calm him down. Dude, just fucking sedate his ass so you find a fucking new body. Like, does he really need me walking around getting all angry and shit? Come on. No, now. just, you see, just give him a pot brownie, sit him down in front of the fucking TV, put on MASH or something, just get him chill. No, fucking get him, like, get him whatever fucking whoever drew this art on, like, fucking <laughs> acid or some shit. Yeah, put on some murder she wrote, just have him watch that. <laughs> Golden Girls. <laughs> <laughs> Put on some fucking forensic files. Oh my god, fucking! What's that one show that you said that you watch a lot, like a lot? It's like an old person show. Shit, what is it? What? Um, that I, I watched it, a lot. It was, yeah, it was some mystery show. Oh, unsolved mysteries. Yeah, I'm gonna watch that shit. Yeah, Robert Stack. Yeah, old highlight shit. Ones. Yeah. And put on combat. That was a good show. No, we don't need. Palpatine learn how to like you know <laughs> fight machine dude because he'll he'll literally just like make a thousands of e webs and make the like rebels <laughs> flank them. Every every attack involves flanking and e webs. <laughs> <laughs> every panel Shit. of Dark Empire opens up with the the stormtroopers menacing watching the heroes as they're laughing to themselves <laughs> in the sight of their e webs. No, they have to they have to be in some burnt out building and they're like they're sitting there with the e webs. Some some random group, village laughing. in France. <laughs> random village somewhere in the galaxy but walking around and it ends up fucking you know, they have to fire maneuver and take out the machine gun but there's there's some drama and you know uh, one or two people get killed <laughs> if, there's a lesson to be learned if our audience hasn't seen combat they're there they're missing out on the goodness the greatness of this this fucking oh conversation God. combat is fuck it is an old show but it's a good show yes they couple that with Band of Brothers and not Band of Brothers, but shit. Uh, the Pacific. Uh, no, the video game that we. Oh, we Brothers in Arms. Yeah, uh, yeah. Then you'll be. You know how to flank a, a machine gun from World War Two. Yeah, you'll be uh, set. You'll be fucking set. You can just go back in time and just win the war by yourself. Shit. <laughs> shit that's what's basically I mean, what you do in Brothers in Arms. Shit, how many machine like MG forty twos are you flank in that goddamn game? How many goddamn French villages do you go through? <laughs> Fucking hell! Too damn many. Like, Road to Hill, like not Road to Hill Thirty, but uh, I know there's Earn of Blood, but the one set during Operation uh, Market Garden was pretty cool because mm -hmm. you can Is literally pick one? up the M yeah, and you can pick up the MG forty two or like run around and place it where you want it. It's actually it's not bad, but it, now they don't even make them anymore. So yeah, 
All right, we've had too much fun talking about good stuff. We need to talk about Dark Empire. Dark Empire. There's a, a weird mention here of that Forest Hell or whatever Palpatine was on about. How if he dies, he's not going to go into a clone since he doesn't have any more. He's going to go like an unending world of torment or some shit. It sounded pretty metal, but it's like, what the hell is it? I think he's making up shit yet again. <laughs> yeah. Because there's no other mention of the Force Hell or Force in another world that you have to build like an obsidian portal to get into. Like, a <laughs> drive, so, like... <laughs> I don't know what the fuck's going on here. So I'm going to do too much fucking dank and play too much Minecraft. Huh? <laughs> Palpatine's gonna wake up. He's gonna be surrounded by zombie pigmen in the forest hell. <laughs> <laughs> no, how do I make a workbench? The fucking the goddamn guy is fucking crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh shit! All right, let's continue on. So Luke heads to Asus, and he learns the Dark Siders took the clan chiefs. I don't know how, but they somehow find out where Vajun is, and they go there, there to assault it and find the chiefs. Uh, they fight the Darksiders. Luke has a, a funny moment here of toppling the Vader statue to crush some of their enemies here with the Force. And yeah. they, they discover the chiefs are like uh, encased in carbonite. Uh, it cuts back to Palpatine again. And he's on Korriban now, and he's trying to gain wisdom from the oh, Sith. yeah. Do you want to do this part? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, because he has uh, a dark sider with him, right? And they have to go to the the Valley of the Sith Lords, which comes up a lot in you know the EU. Which is Cor you have to think Korriban used to be a like one of the Sith home worlds um, before you know the shit hit the fans. So there's a lot of like uh, you know Sith Lords here buried. So Palpatine goes into like this creepy ass Sith tomb. And, like, they're all talking to him, right? And they're like, you know, because uh, I was under the assumption that Palpatine been here before and asked for these guys' as help. Because they're like, have you come to join us, Palpatine? He's like, no, I will never die. you you got to help me do this and do that. So, basically, these old Sith-ass ghost guys, right? They look like mummies almost. Like, they're really petrified, like, kind of corpses. They give Palpatine, like, this... The seeing sphere shit. I forget what it was called, but it was, yeah. it was cool. And like Palpatine wanted to know where the kids were because his his body's dying and his essence needed to go into another form. So he was trying to find Leia and the kids so he can go into the kids. So he was he did like some force stuff and Leia felt his presence. <laughs> Because he's, you know, he's doing something to his ore, but it, she's like, oh, yeah, I, I I, feel him, blah, 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 blah. She sends, like, a mind blast back at him. Yeah, so he gets out, but he, the, he figured out, he honestly figured out where they're going or, yep. you know, whatnot. So he kind of heads off and uh, wants to intercept them because at this point he need, he really needs to find a new body or he's just, he's going to go to the fucking the force another world <laughs> with the Tommy Pingman, so... Yep, he finds out they're heading on to Onderon, so he just warps the Eclipse 2 over in front of them as they're trying to get there, and gets them in a tractor. Uh, yeah, that work. When, when the fuck do tractors ever work? I, outside of A New Hope. That's something we're going to have to look up. It's, it's probably <laughs> rare, but we need to look at it. Like, Jesus, these things are just never getting that fucking break. Like, even, in, like, in the Thrawn books, right? Like, remember that one guy tried to, like, tractor beam Luke's X-Wing, and mm -hmm. he jobbed at that shit? Mm-hmm. I don't think tractor beams work in this universe. <laughs> God help you if you ever try to tractor a main character. It's just never going to work. Yeah, ain't that the truth. Wait a minute, no. What are we saying? In the um, Han Solo novels, it worked. Mm. Remember the victory class? Okay, yeah. It worked there. <laughs> yeah, I, I had to remember that. It's like we just wanted, we just read a book that actually the tractor beams weren't completely useless. They fail more often than they succeed. I'll say that. Yeah. Yes. They have a high fail rate, which is why would you even use it? Because <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. The Falcon gets damaged as it gets out of the tractor beam there, and they have to land on Onderon. Meanwhile, Luke is gathering up. Uh, all the other main characters to assault the Eclipse because they think Palpatine is on there and they want to take care of him once and for all. 
because they've captured one of the Jedi holding prison ships that was used on Luke in Volume 1. And the Solos try and hide on Onderon, but the Emperor sneaks onto Onderon in the guise of just a wary traveler to try and get to Anakin Solo. He goes down there, (laughs) and he confronts Leia with his dark side attendants, and there's a little battle here which ultimately ends with Han shooting Palpatine in the back and killing that clone. But Palpatine yeah. sends his Force soul out to try and go inside Anakin. But legendary Apatageos Brand gets into the way and absorbs Palpatine's spirit, protects Anakin Solo. And as Apatageos Brand is dying, he says the dark side is eating him from the inside. But he's trapped Palpatine within him. So Apatageos Brand and Palpatine finally die. And that is the final death of Palpatine. Meanwhile, above the planet, uh, Lando, Chewie, and I forget whoever else, uh, they have R2 hack into the Eclipse, and they program it to jump towards the Galaxy Gun and ram right into it, destroying it, just as the Galaxy Gun fires a hyperspace missile at Biss, which it was aimed at, destroying the entire planet with all those people dead, the last line from the narrator is, Long live the New Republic. Bins of dead. A yes. lot of people, you, have to, you can't tell me that everybody in this was dead. There were some smugglers, freight haulers that weren't too bad. All of them dead. Every one of them. Dead. Yes. And that is how Dark Galaxy Empire Gun. 3 ends. Dead. The Eclipse again, dead. Galaxy Gun destroyed. Dead. Palpatine dead all, once more. All that dead. Yes. Oh my god. What a headache. Well, now that the dust is settled, it's not really that bad, is it, Spark? All right, I'm going to say this. But this is my thoughts on Dark Empire. The plot is I don't know, like, really stupid. Like, it could have been paced better. I mean, it, people can say this is nitpicking, but this is just, you know, our opinion. But I, it was, I honestly, the plot's kind of dumb. Like, they shouldn't have brought back Palpatine. It should have been uh, another kind of bad guy-esque show. Because, like, at the end, Palpatine kind of died, like, in an unclimactic way. Like, you can't topple, like, Darth Vader throwing him down the shaft, right? You know, with that moment. And then if you, I mean, if you really had to have him come back, at least have like kind of like have like a final duel look into like good versus evil here, right? And like Luke did something like some Jedi technique to kind of seal uh, the evil within Palpatine's. Nope. So nope. They, Han they just duel. shoots him in the back, and then he just gets sucked inside a floating ball, man. The end. Yeah, and like you know what I mean. Like it has some like cool like epic like good versus evil duel. Then like once Pal once J- uh, Luke like strikes down the Emperor. It has like some climactic shit, and like, okay, he's dead now for real. We defeated the evil, and now we can be- put balance to the force. No, or man that we barely even know or even talk to. Oh, and he dies. Yeah, I'm like, okay, some weirdo from a pocket dimension. Yes, good points of the novel, right? Uh, Dark Empire is does serve a base as a lot of the EU. Uh, there's a lot of content you could take from from this comics, like the World Devastators, the Droid Tie Fighters, um, the Crystal of Beasts, um, not the Dark Side Eye Ups. You can keep those there. Um, <laughs> the new planets, um, the new planets that we introduced to. There's a lot of cool shit from this comic. There's a, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of stupid stuff, but there's a lot of cool stuff you could take from it, like. And it's been a, like, unique read. Like, I listened to it because I already read this before. But, like, again, my final thoughts are read it, make up your mind. It's worth a read at least once. Then maybe you can yep. critique it or maybe like it, maybe you don't. But I'll say this again. It is better than what we ha- what we got. Yeah, well, the movie theaters. we've at least covered all of it now and we don't need to do it ever again. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there's, uh, you know, an acquaintance here of ours. Uh, you know who that is. He's probably going to disagree with all of our talking points, but, you know. Well, he's entitled to an opinion, no matter how wrong it is. Yeah. Well, uh, isn't his um, his girl, uh, she's involved with someone called Bernard, right? <laughs> 
I'm not going to get that well, inside joke. <laughs> no, we will. And if he listens, <laughs> he will. Yeah. That's all that counts. Yes. But, you know, if you're listening, you know, get on you, buddy. So now that we've done Dark Empire, we're doing Crimson Empire next, which is going to be such a breath of fresh air. Yeah. And now Crimson Empire was a comic that I've read almost like a lot when I was a kid. And I also own a physical copy of this um, comic. So this should be really, really cool. And I can, actually, this is one I can't wait to like discuss because we can go in like the nitty gritty with this. Cause it's, it's, re- it's like, what it's like really, it's like an action oriented kind of like story. It's, it's really badass. I, I really do like Crimson Empire. Mm-hmm. It's going to be fun going through that again. Do you actually, there's, yes. you know, there's a, um, a one shot uh, for Crimson Empire two, which I think is unaffiliated with the main story. It's like, uh, Kier Kanos is like a bounty hunter. I've never read it, but do you think you want to read that too and include it? Hmm. Let's see. Let's let's get to the first one then. Where we're about the second part, maybe. I. It's a one shot. Maybe we'll, we'll do that because you know, anything Crimson Empire. Pretty pretty neato. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Crimson Empire is like it's kind of like mid tier in terms of popularity. Like people know about it, but it doesn't really get much discussion i feel yeah. and there's a lot it's, of it's like nice. there's a lot of cool stuff in it too in terms of like integrating the the greater eu that was going on at the time like we see the use the lusankia super star destroyer that the rebels have yeah you see the the nanny droid of the solo kids well like that's why this this podcast exists it's, we're trying to put light on some like the lesser known like not as popular like you know media within mm-hmm. star wars like the like, these six species books and you know that sort of thing han solo novels because probably i don't think a lot of people have read a lot of the old han solo novels i don't think yeah not that um, many the the galaxy of fear books we might do they're actually like there's like a lot of them but they're short yeah after we've reading. done all the dark empire i, I kind of want to read one of those yeah they're they're pretty neat but um also before we forget i also want to mention people listening um, we might be setting up one of these days an email. Uh, so if you have any suggestions or comments or whatever you want to send, you can send to us here. Yep. Once uh, we got that going on, I'll just uh, retroactively put it in all the descriptions of all our episodes. Yeah, yeah and I also did uh, want to recognize we have we have some new listeners, which is pretty neat. So hopefully you're well, enjoying actually, us. Actually, as it turns out, you know, I was well, talking to that acquaintance of ours, and you know, they told me that was probably just his VPN having them appear in different countries <laughs> well anyway whoever is listening i i hope you're enjoying yourself whoever you are yes if you're acquaintance of the show or friends of ours or whatnot but i'm glad you're listening yes because this is fun to do no matter how big the yes. audience is yes i mean it, it, it is always fun talking about star wars so all right if you got nothing else to say i think this is a good point to close it nope i uh that's my pretty much last last. Give this a read. No matter how bad we said it was, at least you need to read it once and look at the comic and look how trippy they yes. are. Yes. People, people honestly undersell how bad it is. Yeah. Well, people, I've seen like in the comments, a lot of people were praising how good this was. No. Like, oh, no. 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 Not at all. But then, like I said, that's, that's our humble opinion. You take it with a grain of salt if you disagree. All right. Well, thank you for listening, and we'll be back with Crimson Empire.